Hey everyone, my name is Michael. I'm the customer success lead at Xano. And in this tutorial, I'm going to uh, go over how to do uh, Google OAuth using Xano as the back end and Bubble as your front end. So Google OAuth, if you're not familiar with it, is a way to authenticate in your application uh, just by using your existing Google account. So if you've ever been on an application and you've seen those buttons that says something like uh, sign in or continue with Google, and then you click that, and then you're prompted to select your existing uh, Google or Gmail account. You select that and then magically you are authenticated into that application. That's what that process is of Google OAuth. Uh, so in Xano, we have already pre-built a uh, marketplace extension uh, to be able to just one click install Google OAuth uh, and the different API endpoints into your workspace. There is a little bit of configuration needed. You need to go to the Google Developer Console, get things like a client secret um, and client ID. Um, there's instructions for how to do that um, on our Marketplace page over here. And there's also already an existing demo on that. So I'm not gonna go through that in this video. Um, this will be more about the uh, setup of how these API endpoints actually interact with your front end and what to do to get it all set up. Um, so, with our Google OAuth Marketplace extension, um, you might have seen there's this Explore Live demo. And when you go to it, it looks like something like this. Um, there's one more instruction where you actually need to set this thing called an Authorize Redirect URI uh, with your OAuth client ID in that Google Developer Console. And then it gives you this little URL here. Uh, you would go to your Google Developer Console, put it in your Authorize Redirect URI, and then you can run this demo, right? Um, so what this redirect URI is, is when you actually first are on that application, you hit, okay, sign in with Google, and then you're prompted to see your actual different Google accounts, or maybe you just have one. I have, I have a few, um, that is going to, uh, once you select that, then it's going to trigger off this redirect URI, which basically takes you back to your app. So when you hit that button, to actually select one of your Google accounts, you're actually being taken to a Google hosted um, page. And then that page, once you actually select whatever account you wanna log in, needs to know this redirect URI, uh, which is gonna be unique for your application to actually uh, send you back to um, that front end, right? So if we jump over to uh, Bubble, which I have open over here, um, I have this great, nice blank uh, workspace here. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is create a new page. Um, and I've created one called Login. And this will just be that landing page um, after you get past just the uh, login screen um, for you your users to actually land on when they're authenticated into the app. Um, once you have that, you just wanna go ahead and um, preview this. And I know you can't see my address bar right now, um, but you'll go ahead and actually um, take the URL all the way up until um, you see that question mark, debug mode equals true. And I'm just gonna go ahead and copy that and you'll be able to see, I'll paste this into my uh, developer console here so you can see what it looks like. So we can actually go ahead and put this in. So um, real quick, why don't I go ahead and show you what the full URL was. Just come back to bubble. And then this is the full URL but we don't want this parameter that says uh, debug mode. Okay, so we're just taking the actual uh, URL here um, for this test mode. And I'll just go ahead and save that now in my console. And we'll see that is actually updated there. Um, so now that I have that, and I'm just gonna um, open this one more time because I'm going to need this a couple more times. And let's go back to Bubble now and start actually uh, building this out. So you're gonna need a couple plugins. Uh, first one being the Bubble API connector. And the second one is optional, it just depends on how you wanna pass um, authentication tokens in your application. You can either use uh, the URL parameters or you can use local storage. Um, so the local storage one is another option there. So let's start with the um, Bubble API connector and let's actually add some API and we'll just call this Xano uh, Google OAuth here. And let's go ahead and uh, come back to Xano and start adding these API endpoints. So you can see there's this Google OAuth group from the marketplace. 
and we can actually click in here. And the first one is this uh, Google init API endpoint. So this is what the user is going to hit when they actually need to um, want to log in or continue um, with their Google account for your application. You see it takes in that redirect URI as a parameter. And then it's doing this function which produces the uh, get auth URL, which actually goes and produces that um, uniquely hosted Google um, page. So you can select whichever one of your uh, Google accounts you might want to use. So I'm going to copy this endpoint URL. And let's go ahead and go back to Bubble. Let's expand this call here. And I'm just going to call this um, init right here. And we'll just go ahead and paste that endpoint in. It's a get. But let's go ahead and use as an action. Because this is going to be an action. We're going to click a button, and we're going to do something, right? Um, you noticed in Xano, uh, there was an input for that redirect URI. So I'm going to go ahead and name that parameter right here, redirect URI. And then I can come back to uh, my Google Console here, where I have my authorized redirect URI for my Google front end, or my bubble front end, rather. Copy that. And then I'm just going to paste that in as the value. And I can actually leave this as private because this value doesn't need to be dynamic because we'd always be uh, navigating back to that same page in our front end uh, whenever we are using Google OAuth in our app, right? So I can go ahead and initialize this call. And as you can see, it produces this URL that would take us to uh, those different Google accounts. So I'll go ahead and uh, just save that real quick. And let's go ahead and add the next call here. Um, so if we come back to Xano and look at these API endpoints, so the first one we need is this OAuth Google init right here. Remember, that goes to that Google web page where we can authenticate. And then we have this continue. We have login and sign up. So let's talk about those real quick. Um, sign up and login are pretty self-explanatory, right? Sign up is when you're going to an application for the first time. You don't have an account. Uh, you would sign up. Login is when you already have an account. Um, then you can just log in, right? Continue, however, is inclusive of both sign up and login. I really like the continue endpoint um, because you don't need to differentiate whether you are signing up or logging in. Um, if you have don't have an account, you can use this continue one. If you already have an account, you can still use this continue one. It's inclusive of, inclusive of both, whereas if you're signing up and logging in, you need um, two separate, uh, basically, API calls, depending on what a user is doing. Where with continue, you can use just one. So for this demo, I'm going to use the continue one. Um, definitely love its flexibility. Um, you can see that it takes in a code, uh, which is coming from, uh, which is Google sending, going to send in the URL once you're redirected to that front end. And then your redirect URI, which is the page we're actually landing on, right? So let's go ahead and uh, copy this API endpoint URL. And we'll come back to bubble here. Once again, let's go ahead and paste this. And I'm going to call this uh, continue Google here. And this will also be used as an action. OK. And let's go ahead and add those parameters. The first one, remember, was code. And the other one was uh, the redirect URI. And I can go ahead and paste that redirect URI. Actually, that's the API endpoint. Let's go ahead one more time, get that back from our Google console here. Let me make sure I copy that. And I'll paste in that redirect URI. I can leave that private. The code, however, um, this is going to be the dynamic value of this API call. So we want to uncheck private there. Um, how do we actually get the code? Well, uh, one way we can do that is we can jump back to Xano. And if we go to this init API endpoint, we go ahead and run this. And I have my uh, bubble redirect URI in there. And I just hit run. Well, now we have this auth URL that's populated. I can simply just copy this and open a new um, tab here. And let's just paste that in. And here you can see is that web page hosted by Google. I can choose one of my accounts. And you can't see my address bar. Um, so I'm going to actually go ahead and uh, now just copy this. So I just copied the address that was produced from uh, Google there. And let's go into um, Bubble just real quick. 
We're just going to jump to the workflow, actually the design. Let's just do some text here so you can just see what this um, URL looks like. So I'm just going to paste that in here. Um, and now you can see um, that there is this code parameter uh, along with this scope. Scope is something in the um, developer console you can read more about it with Google. Um, but this code is actually going to be what I want to input, and this is what I'm going to take. So let me go ahead and grab that. And this will be a little tricky here, but I want to go all the way up to um, that and sign right there and just go ahead and copy that code. Let's go ahead. I can actually uh, just delete, delete this text here. I don't need that, but let's go back to the plugin. And in the code here, let me go ahead and paste that in. Now I'm ready to initialize the call. And when you do that, you can see here are, here's my token, here's my name and email all produced from that continue with Google. So I'll go ahead and just save that. Um, and we'll just add one more API call here. And this is gonna be the auth me from Xano. And this will just mimic a authenticated API endpoint, which just gets our own information. So this is in my CRUD operations actually. I'm just gonna copy this. Um, we'll go back to bubble. We'll simply paste this in and this requires authentication. So we need a header that says authorization and the value will be bare. We wanna uncheck private and let's actually get um, that token from Xano. We can very easily do that by doing run and debug, hitting this style and then this auth token populates. We can copy it with that button and come back to Xano here and let's initialize this call and let's save that. Okay, now that we have our API endpoint set up, let's actually go ahead and look at how we would actually design this um, and do the workflow in Bubble to make this all talk to each other between Bubble and Xano. So the first thing, um, we have this, let's start on our index page. I know index login might sound kind of backwards. Um, let's go ahead, the index would actually be that login sign up button in this example. So let's go ahead and add a button here and just make it nice and big. And the text can say, um, we'll say continue uh, with Google, right? So you might have some other options here. Someone might be able to either do a different OAuth, say Facebook or Apple, or maybe they can just sign in with uh, their email address normally. But for this example, I'm just gonna have this continue uh, with Google button here. And we can go ahead and actually do this uh, workflow. So when this button is clicked here, we'll go ahead and do an action. And we'll go to plugins. And we want that init uh, endpoint. Remember, this is going to take us to that Google hosted uh, web page here. And so we've triggered that API call when the button's called. Now we'll do navigation. And we'll open an external website. And the destination will insert dynamic data here from that init API call. So I'll hit um, dynamic data. I'll do result from step one, which is that init endpoint. And then I'll take the auth URL. And clicking that button will now take me to that Google hosted web page where I select one of my Google accounts to actually authenticate myself, right? So that's all you need to do for this workflow because you'll be taken to an external website um, the next thing that you're going to do is Google's going to send us back to Bubble. So now we need to figure out, okay, what happens when we're actually back in Bubble? How do we actually complete that authentication um, and then start using that valid authentication token? So let's go back to the design. So now that we have continue with Google all set up, let's go to the page we're going to land on, which I named login. Um, now that we're here, Let's do a couple things. So um, first, I'm going to go ahead and drag just this uh, send storage onto the page. And we'll call that send storage A. That's fine. And then we'll go ahead and also drag the get storage on here. Um, the way I'm going to do it is once we land on this page, we'll just refresh it, uh, do the API call, send the token uh, with that storage, and then also get it again when it's loaded. OK? So we'll go ahead and just do that. Um, let's go ahead and open up the workflow now. 
So we'll go ahead and just say when the page is loaded, and then we'll click here to do an action. We'll go to plugins, and we'll do this uh, continue with Google API endpoint, which will actually complete that authentication. Remember, it takes in the code and also the hard-coded redirect URI. So I'll go ahead and select that. And you see um, it's asking for this param code. So this is what we hard-coded in there. Uh, what we can actually do is we can insert dynamic data. And because Google is going to pass that code parameter through the URL, we can go ahead and choose get data from page URL. And the parameter name will just be code like that. And Bubble will be able to parse that code and put that into this API call, which will complete the authentication process and produce us with that authentication token. So now that we have this token, let's go ahead and add another action. And we'll go to element actions. And let's go ahead and uh, do a send storage. And in the send storage here, this will open up um, these key value pairs that we'll define. So let's go ahead and define key as token. And then let's insert dynamic data here. And we'll do result from step one, which is that continue API endpoint, which produces our token. And we'll get the token result there. So result one's token. And that'll be stored as this key token for when we actually um, go ahead and get uh, the token, right? So now that we have that, I'm going to go ahead and add another action here. We'll go navigation. We'll refresh the page. And then I'll do one more action here. And we'll go ahead and do push values a get storage. So we first sent the result of that token. And now we'll just go ahead and get it. And the key name, remember, was token. And it was just key, no number after it. Um, and that will just give us uh, now the token from that result. So if we jump back to the design, and let's say that I just want some text here. And I'll just display my name, basically. Let's insert dynamic data. And we'll get data from an external API call. And we'll choose that auth me. And you see that auth me requires this um, header. And in here right now, we have hard coded bear and this token. So what we can do to make this dynamic, once again, you guessed it, is insert dynamic data. And we'll actually select this uh, get storage A right here, which we did in that workflow just now. And we'll select the key. Um, and then before that, we need to make sure that we hard code this word bear in there. So it's bear space. Uh, the get storage is key. OK, so let's close that. And then I just need to pick what I want here. So let's go ahead um, and I'll say my name just right there. OK, so now we're actually ready to go ahead and uh, demo this all. So I'm going to go ahead and start from uh, the index page. And let's go ahead and preview this. OK, so here's my button that is going to continue with Google. This is going to hit that uh, OAuth Google init endpoint and take me to Google once I select this. Now I'm on the uh, Google hosted web page. So I'm on uh, left my bubble front end. And now I can choose an account to uh, connect with Bubble. I'll go ahead and select one. And this is continue, remember. So it's inclusive of both sign up and login, which is super flexible. Definitely recommend it. And now we're taken um, back to that page. It refreshed itself, and um, it or it hit the continue endpoint, produced that token, uh, refreshed itself, and then sent that token uh, using that local storage into the header of my auth me endpoint and uh, is now displaying my name. So now we can continue to use that local storage if you want to go that route to hit other authenticated endpoints in your application uh, from page to page. Or you can pass it in the URL parameter uh, as well, whatever your preference is. So uh, there you have it. Uh, that is how you would use uh, Xano as the back end, leveraging the Google OAuth extension and Xano authentication uh, with Bubble as a front end. So hope you found this video helpful. Um, obviously, OAuth is a, a favorite of a lot of no coders. Sometimes it can be a little tricky. Hopefully, this opened your eyes, even if you're not using uh, Bubble as a front end. Uh, definitely a good tutorial to look at. If you thought this was helpful, please uh, like this video, subscribe to our channel um, so other people can find it. Uh, thanks for watching, and see you guys in the next one.